beautiful. So something happened there which created temperatures between 800 to 1100 degrees centigrade. Is it a meteorite? Did it land slowly for some reason? It's become a station of knowledge and grace. Namaste World Razors, Sabina and Roger here. Let's watch Is This Mountain from Outer Space by Sadhguru. Hmm. Yeah, this was a request from our World Yogi member, Pratik, Pratik B. B. So thank you so much for this request. Um, let's see what this is all about. So if you look at this whole setup, the geographical, geological setup around it, you see what is called as a conglomerate of uh, mass, which is like concrete, which has all pebbles molded into some molten earth. So something happened there, which created temperatures between 800 to 1100 degrees centigrade, which melted the soil, but which did not melt the rocks. If a volcano happens, rocks melt because the temperatures go up to 3000 degrees centigrade. If a, a meteorite lands, temperatures hit 4000 to 6000 degrees centigrade, so everything melts. These are the two phenomena we know which generally create that kind of temperature. Or if uh, the tectonic plates move, which has definitely happened in the area, if they happen, then also temperatures could raise when because of the friction and things could melt. I really don't have enough scientific information as to what is the kind of temperatures that happen. Some Russian scientist says that uh, this kind of tectonic clash could create that kind of 800 to 1000 degrees centigrade and soil could melt and all this stuff. It's possible. That looks like the most uh, sensible uh, scientific explanation that one can give. So soil melted and the rock did not melt. That's why you see all those mountains like concrete standing up with all pebbles sticking all over the place. All the mountains around when you're walking are like concrete mountains. You can see pebbles and molten soil. But Kailash alone is standing like a steel, like black steel, it's standing there. And last time we sent people right up to the core to get some rocks from the mountain itself. Wow. We have them with us. We see that it's energy-wise, it's reverberating in a big way, but we do not know the geological composition of this. Is it a meteorite or is it a certain rising that happened from the earth itself? We do not know that exactly. Geologically, they say it's a certain rising. Why this rising happened, all this, I have not found any uh, logical explanations to this. Why a peak would rise like that, I really do not know. If it's because of tectonic movement, it should have been of one kind. Like you find the Indian Himalayas, it's of one kind. It has peaks, but it's of one kind. Here it seems to be different. There may be a geological explanation, I do not know. But you can see geologically, it's of a different structure altogether. Either you can try to read miraculous happenings into this, or if there isn't anything like that, it's just a natural earth formation happening that's happened and somehow this peak had more integrity. Obviously it has because of the kind of rock that it is. So Shiva and uh, other yogis chose this place because this was a good place. That could be the most sensible explanation. Or there could be some other crazy happening because <laughs> there's a crazy lake <laughs> next door. So there could be some possible craziness out there in its making. Or it could be just a natural geological happening. Both are possible. We need a scientific assessment of this, which we haven't found yet. Story-wise, uh, Shiva is always sitting at the peak. 
of Kailash. With uh, Parvati sitting on his lap, on his left lap. This is all you need to understand this. This is a story which is trying to narrate a certain dimension of life. This is not a physical thing that there's a man sitting there and a woman sitting on his lap. Hmm. That's not the point. <laughs> how life is made, that's how the story is. The science of life expressed in a story form, a dialectical expression of life. So, he is sitting on the speak constantly, unless he goes to his original kailash sometimes, he goes away, only then he is missing, otherwise he is always sitting there. So kailash is his original abode. This is his visiting kailash. Hmm. It has many aspects to it. We have been promising you that uh, we will find out the nature of this material, what this is and I sent a few pieces with one of the Detroit meditators, they were supposed to find out and uh, I don't know, I think they must be keeping the stones in their house and worshipping it. <laughs> <laughs> they got the nice stones and they must be keeping it in their shrine. <laughs> I don't know what happened but <laughs> I have not gotten any reports. Somebody else said there's another place in Arizona and they're going to send it there and they took a few more pieces from me and I don't know where they went. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, apart from this, the significance of the mountain for us is not its nature, how it happened, however it has happened. Is it a meteorite? Did it land slowly for some reason and all this kind of stuff? Maybe it's just a natural happening. But for us the significance is what it… right now what it has become a station for. It's become a station of knowledge and grace. That's all that matters to us. Fascinating. His last words, of course, mm -hmm. most beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, A station of grace and knowledge. Hmm. Yeah, so, so the mountain itself is, you know, when Shiva's the visiting abode, I guess. So the, so the abode here, but his real abode is like transcendental beyond, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay, that, okay, I think okay. that's what he was saying. Hey? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand it at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So a lot of speculation as to where it came from, but at the end, clarifying that yeah. that doesn't really matter, and that's yeah. not what's important. It's mm -hmm. obviously a very sacred mountain and something, you know, mystical, magical, transformative. Definitely happened because it's the only thing there. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me, in a way, and I don't know anything about it really but there's that hill that brown hill in australia that's just <laughs> as rock i just thought of that too <laughs> that's just obviously you know like where did that come from so the same thing so something that's just totally unique you know within an environment so because yeah you see the color of the himalayas in general and all of a sudden there's a big black one like totally black and it's so it's different right so, so representative and then being representative in those dharmic, you know, traditions, mm -hmm. the Jainism and Buddhism and Hinduism, you know, all see it as being sacred. And I think in Buddhism, it's Mount Meru, right? Yeah. Which is like the center of the universe or the center of the mandala of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And so symbolic of that. So when he said that Shiva's abode you know, is more of a transcendental thing. And that's how the Buddhists kind of see Mount Meru as well. So, so very fascinating and how these truths, you know, in these, you know, legendary, you know, stories, how they came into our human experience, you know, there's one source and then it branched out into these different traditions. Mm -hmm. So, and but, but accepting it, 
you know, as sacred, how they all do, then yeah, it's obviously a very important geographical site on this planet for yeah. spiritual seekers, right? The energy and the yeah. power and just hearing Sakura talk about being in the field of the mountain is itself, you know, transformative. And then the lake being right there as well. So, yeah, I right. can totally get that. Yeah. And it's on our list. So <laughs> uh, we'll let you know when we go there and maybe you want to come because, uh, <laughs> Yeah, what a pilgrimage site. I'm a bit uh, scared already just thinking about doing a pilgrimage there because <laughs> I do have always stuff coming up when I do pilgrimages. And this, I think, is one. It's going to be one of the most holiest places I've ever been to. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, when you go to holy places, it, it doesn't happen all the time, but uh, there are some energy fields there that you just feel like you cannot not feel it and it's different mm -hmm. for everyone so the places that i've been to mm -hmm. sometimes you know you walk into a house um oh, and yeah. it's like walking against an energy wall it's like and, and you didn't even expect that right mm -hmm. um yeah and stuff like that so uh mm -hmm. i can't wait to to go there sacred spaces yeah. so i'm holding in mind uh Satguru as our tour guide. I'd love to go with one of his <laughs> one of his groups because we did that that uh, trek to Mount Kailash video. If you haven't watched oh, that, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. please yeah. watch that video. We're just yeah. seeing Satguru and all of his uh, all of his people, all of his followers making the trek and then just the journey. So it'd be nice. It'd be fun to do it in a big group with some. Well, my parents are in. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. Klaus really wants to go, my yeah. stepdad. Yeah. So we'll all go with Satguru, maybe, possibly. Anything is possible. Cool. So thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video as much as we did, please hit that like button. Remember to subscribe. It really, really helps yeah. the channel. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Do you think it's an alien rock <laughs> from outer space? Or is it just part of the natural geograph geography of the planet? We don't know. So what do you think? Uh, and remember, raise yourself. And raise the world. Thank you so much, everyone. And a very special thank you to our world yogi, Pratik B. We love you. Peace.